Welcome to another Sales Training Dread with Sins, a short podcast about sales training's mistakes you should be avoiding. And today with me, I have a very special guest that I met face to face two, three weeks ago. Kian, I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was brilliant to uh, to meet you in Berlin. Um, it's a fantastic time with all the speakers and a great, great event. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was, was really nice to to meet you and uh and we had i think we had really great chats and we laughed a lot so i was like yep yeah, i have to have him on my podcast that's exactly the type of guest i'm looking for so before we continue tell us a bit more about yourself because i know a lot about yourself but my audience maybe doesn't so <laughs> sure absolutely um i'm kyan um i'm an account executive slash bdm I have a podcast which is called because of bdr's podcast which i'm hoping my father does come on one day we share tips and insights into the SDR BDR role on how to become better. Um, I love new guests with new insights on there. And aside from that, I'm a keynote speaker speaking on various topics. I'm into to boxing and, and football as well. I'm a huge, huge Arsenal fan. So uh, that, that's me. <laughs> I was about to ask Arsenal or Tottenham Arsenal. You got my you got my question. All right. Yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah. I yeah. I, yes. Uh, let's let's book a time in your podcast as well but I, I love the fact that you have a podcast to share uh, actionable tips because I think that's like super useful and a lot of podcasts they're a lot like just talking about things instead of like just you know give actionable tips so that's also what I try with mine so super super cool and yeah well um, tell us about fun fact about yourself besides being an Arsenal fan <laughs> A fun fact. Um, I mean, those who came to to um, AR Artists Fest may may know this because I said this, but I think it's quite interesting. So I used to be obsessed with buses and transport here in London. So there was one stage where if you told me uh, the bus number, I could tell you where the bus started and where it terminated. And, you know, I wanted to be a bus driver where I grew up. So now I can probably do a lot of buses in North London, but I used to be able to memorize so many routes. I have so many questions. <laughs> All right. Why, though? Why bus us? <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I think it was like the design. Uh, I just love like the noises that buses made. I was obsessed with the London Transport Museum. I would like dream about there. going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was about to ask you, must love that place. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually want to go back soon because it's been so long. But yeah, I don't know why buses and not trains or anything else. But yeah, even when it came down to toy models of buses, I used to I used to really love it. Oh, that's awesome. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with airplanes. And I always said uh, that if I would get married, I would get married in an airport. <laughs> <laughs> That's or brilliant. if I die, I want my ashes in an airport. Um, but now I completely changed my mind. I don't want to get married and I hate airports because I've been there way too often. So, yeah, glad you keep your passion about buses. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And I, I know you're a really nice guy, very pleasant person. But what are you snobby about? What am I snobby about? Um, I would say any sort of interruptions to my schedule I can be quite harsh and and you know put things off or not attend things that don't fit in with my schedule so I mean that can hurt a lot of feelings when it comes to my friends at times uh, but if I'm thrown off by something that people want to do that's not the usual thing that I do in my day I can be quite snobby and protective over that that's why you must be like the top performer, in, the top performer exactly because of that. I think the best BDMs and account executives are the ones who protect their time. So good on you, man. <laughs> keep that up. Keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> I know your friends might hate it, but keep that up. <laughs> and uh, what are you terrible at? Oh yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I would say it as well in the sales world. I can. I find it very hard to let go of a deal or something that I'm chasing. And I know that I could be a bit more efficient. The times where people let go and say, okay, this hasn't worked out because they said this. I always think, you know, one more call or one more piece of outreach because I've seen it happen. Yeah. Um, but obviously it doesn't happen every time. So I, I think I chase things for a bit too long at times. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope we don't apply that to your personal life. Every <laughs> I really hope that stays in sales. <laughs> 
Otherwise, Netflix will do a TV show about you, man. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah but keep that up protect your time and chase and that's why you are the amazing professional you are so and let's talk about that so i know you were a fantastic salesperson and you shared a lot of knowledge and you get a lot of knowledge from your podcast as well so what would be the first sales training mistake you'd like to mention <laughs> i would definitely say not making things interactive um mm -hmm. That, that's huge for me you know I know a lot of times we have to do things online um, just because of location and so forth but yeah. when things are interactive it can be a bit difficult you know you don't want people talking at you without getting any feedback and things like that I think a lot of the listeners perhaps we've all been there but I think the best times are when things are interactive get yeah. the audience involved get the trainees involved yeah 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 I remember many years ago they <laughs> They showed me a video about like automation testing with a lot of like words I didn't understand for one hour. And that was part of my training. You know how much I learned from it. <laughs> how much? Not, not that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after that, every time I, I had to train my team, I was like, you see that video, don't watch it. It's a waste <laughs> of your time. It's one hour that you can actually be learning something useful for your outreach. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what would be the second one? <laughs> So the second, this this is, again, it sort of relates to my first one. And I know you can't do this every time um, because of the location reasons. But I think sometimes if you do have the option of being in person, then do it. Sometimes, you know, companies, they may have the option of doing things in person, but they may still choose to do it online. If you do have the resources, definitely get in person. It's the same as, you know, meeting you in person. We can feel the energy. We can have a laugh. It's the same as meeting up with your friends in person rather than the phone. There's a different kind of energy and a different, yeah. uh, you know, type of connection that you can have. And even the small things down to being able to, you know, uh, talk to someone or approach someone about a question. So I think the, the second mistake would definitely be if you do have the resources is, is not doing things in person. It's, a, it's huge. Yeah, 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 I agree. Even though, like, yeah, as you mentioned, sometimes that's not possible because of location. And I think that when it's not possible, then make an effort to make it as close as you can to it, right? So so having, like, Zoom calls where you interact or having a set fun assessments after the content that, you know, so try to replicate as much, even though it's not the same, as much as you can, and not do the lazy, watch the video, did you understand, Go, nice, start selling, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. What will be the last one? So the last one for me is probably, and I think this happens a lot, when uh, when you don't show people what not to do. A lot of trainers about do this, do that. And it's just like when you start a new job, right? You get to a stage where you realize, okay, there are some things that I don't know that I need to know. So I think a lot of training is focused on what to do, what's right. But I think a lot of it needs to be around what not to do, what the mistakes are, what can, you know, hold you back. So that's that's the third one for me. Yeah, like, like, like the video that I told my colleagues not to watch, right? <laughs> 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 now they know at least <laughs> but I, I jokes aside I agree with you because um, I really get snobby when I hear these things on LinkedIn the best way to learn is by failing I'm like is it though <laughs> it's not a bad one I'm not saying that's not important but I'd rather learn with the other people's failures you know if I can exactly. right because it saves me a lot of time yes I can learn by experience and, that, and we will all learn by experience. That's inevitable, right? Because we're all going to make mistakes no matter what. So if I'm going to make mistakes, how about instead of 10, I make five? Because someone told me about it, you know? like. Yeah, I most definitely agree. I think what you said there is super important. Learning from the failures of others. It can. It's a shortcut, you know? It is a shortcut. And it's like you don't have to burn your finger to know that you shouldn't put your, you know, your, your hands in fire, you know, so I don't have to do it to learn how not how to do it, you know, like, exactly. So, so you can like save yourself from trouble or from losing a deal or from having a really hard time. Right. Because as you, even for experienced salespeople, the first six months are tough because it's a new company, new ICP, new processes, new colleagues. If you can already like learn things to avoid, to, to reach your goals faster, why not? Right absolutely yeah so is, it's there, perfectly. 
to 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 finish in a high note is there any thing that someone told you in a company that was exactly oh my god i'm so glad you told me that uh yeah and I, and i talk about this a lot i think pester and annoy the top performer or performers you know get your information from them i've done that wherever i go and that's been the most valuable thing it relates back to what you were saying you know you don't have to invent something new someone's done something great or something bad before you you can learn from that yeah fantastic so happy the, to have you here if unfortunately the the episode is is done it's only 15 minutes but it was great to have you and thanks for sharing your tips because i think they're super valuable and very easy to apply which is the goal of this podcast so thank you so much for for coming on my show <laughs> thank you very much appreciate it